You know, to me, it's so aggravating because the, the media covered, you know, everything Trump did you know, to the nth degree. And let's not even get into Russiagate, which was fake and made up. Um, but you you talk about respect for norms. I covered the Obama administration night after night after night after night. And I listened to President Obama himself say he had no more room on, on executive action when it came to immigration reform. He was out of tricks. The bag was empty. He'd done everything he could do and said, I'm not a king. I, I've, I'm out. And then he did more. And then he did the Dreamer uh, executive order and so on. And that was extra. That was that was lawless. That was not respectful of the Constitution. And then I, now I see Joe Biden do things like the uh, eviction moratorium, which he knew he knew was unlawful. He knew the Supreme Court was not going to uphold it. And he he did it anyway. Uh, but he knew it was lawless. And sure enough, it got struck down. And the same thing with the with the mandate on the vaccines. He knew it was going to get struck down, but he did it anyway. So I I mean, you could go on and on about the lawlessness of our of our you know, leaders, but you have to make the case on both sides. This this president has behaved in an in a lawless way as well. You know, the the and what was done to President Trump, look, the Democrats have no high ground. There is no high ground. They they cannot sit and point to him and say, How dare you deny the facts when it comes to his loss? I don't support I Trump did lose. He lost. There's there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud. And a lot of my listeners don't like to hear me say it. Well that's the case. Um, that's not to say it wasn't rigged to help the Democrats. It was. Look back at what they did to the New York Post reporting on Hunter Biden. Right. But I'm just saying, if we're going to be based in reality, let's be based in reality. And this president misleads us at every turn. And the media misleads us at every turn when it comes to media, when it comes to uh, Russiagate, I mean. Uh, and I could go on. And we're supposed to just look at the orange man bad and blame it all on him. And I'm sitting here as somebody who is never a huge Trump supporter saying, these are lies and this is biased and it's unfair and I'm really hating everyone. <laughs> That's where I live. Well, you know, but even what you just said stays stuck in the us versus them. Even what you're just saying stays stuck in the right versus left. I don't think it's the, right the versus wrong. That's dichotomy. where I am. I'm right versus wrong. Well, what? That's what I, but to me, there's a much bigger story here going on uh, than just what Biden did or what Trump did. And that is what both major political parties support. Both ma- both Biden and Trump uh, continued the oil uh, drilling, the ec- the uh, fossil fuel extraction. Well, we which, have to do that. Which is destroying this planet. We have to do both it, Marianne, parties. because we, we, the, it's to help like the people who need to power their houses and need cheap energy cannot get by um, with the prices that we are going to impose on them if we try to make this work on solar and wind turbines. And that's really clear. I'm all for cleaning up the environment. I'm a mom. I don't want to pass on a crappy earth to my children. But I understand the the support for fossil fuels for now or the slow weaning off of them because we need cheap energy. You know, when Jimmy Carter was president, he had solar panels on top of the White House. And uh, one of the first things that Ronald Reagan did was to take them off. If we had started a just transition to clean energy back when Jimmy Carter first talked about it, we would not be vulnerable to Russia the way we are right now. And I disagree with you about what is possible. You know, this used to be a country that knew how to respond to emergencies. This used to be a country that knew how to do whatever it took to make sure that our children's lives would be okay. We have, uh, you were talking about President Trump uh, in the um, a defense budget that the uh, President Biden has just uh, 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 put forth. Uh, there is 18 times more expenditure on the military than on climate change mitigation. The president could declare a national uh, climate emergency. We could take a warp speed effort, make a warp speed effort, employing the National Defense Production Act and move towards a just transition from a dirty economy to a clean economy. This isn't just about what something's going to cost. It's about the fact we're going to cost uh, the cost here at this point could be the survival of the human race. And we could do it. When you say we just can't do it. Yes, we could do it, but not. You know what we could do uh, with? We could do it with nuclear. We could do it with nuclear. Some people would argue with that. I have concern about that, but they are moving forward more quickly on fission than they had expected to be able to. In the meantime, there is so much more that could be done with solar, so much more could be done uh, with wind farms, so much more could be done if we were to, to apply the resources, once again, 
18 times more in this budget to be spent on the military than to be spent on climate change mitigation. But let me and ask you about that. Okay, let me, let, me, let me respond to that, because one of the reasons that he wants to spend more on the military and defense is because there is a belief that deterrence works on on stopping things like what we're seeing in Ukraine right now, that if we had a more robust military, if we had a stronger um, sort of messaging uh, and, and real threats that Vladimir Putin believed, that perhaps he wouldn't do things like this in the future. OK, because this is like an old belief that deterrence works if exercised properly and with a strong bicep. Right. And. And and the president's critics now would say he should have been doing that all along. We should have been sort of exercising our military might, reminding Vladimir Putin who we are, who America is, what we're capable of, as opposed to having the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal while allowing Putin to fill his coffers with Germany's money, which is, you know, totally dependent on Russia for its energy. Right. Because Russia shut or, or Germany shut down its nuclear power plants. Germany's completely dependent on Vladimir Putin. So. In your world, right, like this is the pushback on these positions that this attempt to go green by Angela Merkel weakened Germany, empowered Vladimir Putin. And at the same time, while we were trying to BFF it up with Vladimir Putin by not criticizing Nord Stream 2, which we should have been, which we were doing under Trump, we were stopping it. uh, We were weakening our own position and helping pave the way for a for a war in Ukraine. Well, now Biden has realized none of that worked. Putin's in Ukraine. The Nord Stream tool was a disaster. And we need to build up our military again because not flexing the muscle going into the fetal position was a disaster. Okay, that's the other side's argument. Okay, do I get to talk now? Now it's yours. First of all, okay, first of all, the military. Uh, We have 7,000 nuclear bombs in our arsenal that we know of. And they're now budgeting trillions more on developing more in the future. The obvious, if anything is obvious now, it's that the principle of mutually assured uh, destruction did not work. It only works if you're dealing with uh, a rational actor, which Putin has proven at this point that he is not. So if we had 50 in our arsenal, how would it be any different than having 7,000 in our arsenal? And I don't think that the problem is that um, Putin doubts Uh, our military power. Uh, The issue going on, as everybody knows, is that our leaders and the leaders of Europe do not want to start World War III. I'm, I'm very happy to see the kind of strength and power of the Western alliance, uh, the United States and Europeans. I think that they have shown, um, uh, Vladimir Putin our resolve. It was never an issue of uh, how much military power we have. It was an issue of how much resolve we have. And that is what he did not expect. And we have shown that those, that resolve, uh, both with uh, military aid to Ukraine, as well as with sanctions. So uh, having a, a bigger military at this point would make absolutely no difference uh, to what is going on in, in Ukraine. That's that. Now, on the issue of of the um, environment, the fact that we are so vulnerable uh, to oil and gas from from Russia is the problem. If we had already the fact that now we're going begging MBS, we're begging Saudi Arabia for oil. We're we don't begging Venezuela for oil. This is not if we had moved into green energy, into clean energy over the last few years when we should have, we wouldn't we we wouldn't need need to be horse to Russia. We don't need we to be doing it now. To what do you Saudi mean Arabia? we were energy independent two years ago under Donald Trump when we were using not just oil but natural gas. There's nothing wrong with natural gas. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.